long-lived Earth satellites for communications, weather surveillance, and a host of other important space activities must have low-weight, compact, and rugged electric power sources. Nuclear energy can provide that power reliably and safely. Compact reactor systems are being designed and built by Atomics International for the United States Atomic Energy Commission as part of a commission program to develop devices that will generate electricity for at least one year in space. This development program is designated SNAP, S-N-A-P, Systems for Nuclear Auxiliary Power. The initial flight test program of SNAP nuclear reactors, jointly sponsored by the United States Air Force and the AEC, is called SNAPSHOT. The SNAP-10A reactor system will be the first to be flight tested. The SNAP-10A uses a thermoelectric generator which directly converts heat to electricity with no mechanical moving parts. It is capable of delivering 500 watts of usable electrical power. The SNAP-10A is intended for use after 1963. The SNAP-2 reactor system, using the same reactor concept as SNAP-10A, will produce 3,000 watts of electricity for space applications beyond 1965. This small, lightweight reactor is coupled to a mercury vapor turbo generator, which has only one moving part. This full-scale developmental reactor displays the features of the SNAP-10A reactor. The reactor has two main parts, the beryllium reflectors and the reactor core vessel. 37 fuel elements are contained in the core vessel. Each fuel element is clad in a thin wall steel tube. For minimum weight, the reactor uses beryllium reflectors. Mounted above the core vessel is a self-powered thermoelectric pump. Liquid metal coolant removes the heat from the core vessel. The beryllium reflector is composed of two startup drums and two control drums to control the nuclear reaction. The reactor cannot be made to sustain a nuclear reaction, that is, be made critical, with the drums in the out position or with the reflector assembly removed. The reflector is completely separable from the core to ensure safe reactor ground handling. And during flight, the reflector can be ejected from the core to provide a positive in-flight shutdown. The SNAP reactor must be capable of withstanding the shock and vibrations of a missile launch. The reactor auxiliary power systems must start up in orbit by remote control and be capable of unattended, reliable, and automatic operation in space for a period of at least one year. And they must not present a radiation hazard to operating personnel or the general public. The dominant criterion of SNAP reactor design and resulting performance is safety. The reactor is designed for remote startup in an orbit. It will not be operated unless a satisfactory orbit is obtained. The reactor fuel is metallic uranium U-235, alloyed with zirconium and then converted to hydride form. The solid fuel, clad in steel, guards against the spread of any radioactivity during storage and handling. No shielding is required for technical personnel. Extensive testing of the SNAP reactor through a series of developmental reactors has demonstrated the inherent safety characteristics. Even after critical tests are performed, the low amount of radioactivity generated presents no significant radiation problem. After a short shutdown period, the reactor can be handled and disassembled for shipment. The design of the reactor assures against accidental operation or criticality during shipment. The reflector apparatus is removed and shipped separately to the launch site. In place of the reflector assembly, a sleeve will be mounted around the reactor. The snap reactor cannot operate with the sleeve surrounding the core. The reactor power unit with radiator and accessories will then be packaged in a shipping container. When the SNAP system arrives at the launch site, located in an unpopulated region, it will be handled in a controlled area. The pre-launch checkout of the reactor system does not require nuclear operation. Checkout procedures are performed with the control and safety elements mechanically safe locked in the non-operative position. 
This shows the mating of a non-nuclear nose cone to an Agena vehicle before a successful Air Force launching. The long life auxiliary electric power needed by America's satellites will be provided without altering the proven methods and procedures of pre-launch and mating operations. During this operation, the reactor control system is mechanically locked in a non-operative condition. When personnel withdraw from the launch pad, the mechanical safe lock is removed from the reactor. Accidental startup is then prevented by interlocked controls in the launch control center. The distance needed to ensure safety from nuclear hazards during the launch of a snap reactor is less than that distance already established for missile fuel hazards. There will be no significant hazards added to our space programs by the use of snap reactors. During the launch flight of a vehicle carrying the snap reactor, the reactor will not be in operation. Therefore, no radioactive material will have been produced. If the vehicle should malfunction during flight, mechanical devices will keep the reactor inoperative. The vehicle can be safely destroyed, as shown in this scene, from the historical film archives of the United States Air Force. Today, missiles are rising successfully from launch pads, proving flight system reliability and performance refinements. These successful launches are building the foundation in technology needed for advanced space satellites. The flight of the launching vehicle will be over open ocean areas. The snap reactor will not pass over any populated land mass until an orbit has been achieved. When the orbit has been evaluated as safe by ground tracking stations, the snap reactor will be made critical to furnish the satellite with the all-important auxiliary power, electricity. Then, and only then, will radioactive material be produced by the reactor. After a normal operating period, the reactor will shut down and continue in orbit. The long life orbit will guarantee the decay of all radioactive material to safe limits prior to re-entry. Even though an intact re-entry of a snap reactor would result in no undue radiation hazard, the reactor is being designed to promote burn-up above 100,000 feet by means of re-entry aerodynamic heating. The structural materials surrounding the reactor are designed to separate and allow the reactor to disintegrate on re-entry to the atmosphere as shown in this simulation. Today's systems for nuclear auxiliary power are being developed to furnish the needed electricity for America's space programs. The safety studies and safety tests are demonstrating the dependability of nuclear power for many remarkable and beneficial uses. The world can confidently look forward to enjoying the maximum benefits from our national space program. For example, three reactor-powered satellites in equatorial orbit can be used to accomplish international telecasting. High altitude satellites can provide weather surveillance to furnish accurate long range weather forecasts for agriculture and commerce. Earth satellites can be used for navigation, for air traffic control, and for commercial radio telephonic global communications. Finally, the snapshot flights are the proving ground for nuclear reactors as a safe and dependable source of electric power to provide mankind the dramatic and profound opportunity for probes into deep space and interplanetary travel.